Hi everyone, my name is Alexia Dunkey and today we're back on the RTS project doing another little bit, another little installation, um, if you want to see. So in the last video we had, a, a, well we spent a long time trying to get the button to work before realising it actually was working all along and we were just being incredibly stupid, so adding to the units instead of the population. Um, so first of all we're going to make it add to the population, that's the first thing to do, and second of all we're going to make it so that if we hold down it doesn't go up, and I'm not sure, we'll probably keep it as a button at the moment, it's not ideal, but we'll we'll, uh, we'll go with those things, that's the, the target thing, so first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to sort out the clicking, um, which is here, a mouse check button, I think there is, there's variations on the mouse check bits, um, I think we want mouse check button pressed, I think is the one we want, uh, so we're going to change that, and then give it a run, it's just as simple as that I think, uh, we'll just try, yeah, each time we press it just adds one. Um, that's kind of what we want. So, yeah, we can leave that now. That little bit of code is complete. Um, we also we do need to make it so it's not the units, though. That is important. I think, yeah, we've also got population there. Um, so let's add to the population. Actually, the way we add to the population is by saying instance create, that's create depth. Um, that's actually the, we don't affect the variable, we actually make more instances. I guess isn't great at the moment because they're all overlaid on top of each other, it doesn't matter. But in the future, it will become much more useful when we start separating the units. Um, so I've depth to zero, object basic unit. We're going to make another basic unit at the same coordinates that the basic units are already at, which sounds a bit confusing, but when we do it, it should be all good. Yeah, and you'll see now we mine stuff incredibly quickly. Um, the more population we have, the quicker we mine. Pretty simple. Um, one thing we do have to say though is if, and we need to check the variables here max population, we can get rid of units as well, I think it's important um, if the population does not equal max population yep, we run that it should now not let us exceed our max population Let's see. Yep, so we've only got five now. We're not making any more. If we put down a house, then we can start adding more. We're going to add to a maximum of ten. We now mine stuff incredibly quickly. We'll put some more houses down. That's the amount of the most we have enough money for. We can now mine stuff pretty much instantly. Um, just because we've got so many units. Now that makes sense in my eyes. I might have to change stuff so it's not that quick. <laughs> it is stupidly quick. Um, but yeah, that's the gist of the button. One thing we do need to do, I believe, is move this into the George UI, um, like that, and comment this out. And that should still work, I believe. Um, apart from the button bits, a bit messed up. But hmm, should we keep it in the drawer GUI or not? I think it's probably it's probably easier just to keep it in the the drawer event. To be honest, this just stick with that for the time being um, it doesn't affect it much in, in the actual game um, so yeah that's pretty much our button finished now so imagine this is our imagine we've got a town hall for example um, we do actually have a blog center but it's not uh, visible 
Now on that one we can press this button and it adds a unit. Now in theory we'd have to cost something in return for adding a unit. Um, it wouldn't just be free. But that's interesting. <laughs> anyway, um, it wouldn't just be free. But obviously in this scenario we don't have any food or anything. So we don't have any other option. Um, <laughs> we get wood incredibly quickly here. Um, so yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm going to stop messing around with that now. Um, that's pretty much the button completed. There was something else I was going to do. Oh yeah, I'm going to remove the units. I don't think the units is much use anymore, to be honest. Uh, we're going to move the whole thing up. Into the position it was. And get rid of this. So now if we run it, it should be exactly the same, apart from the fact that we now don't have units, because units was completely irrelevant once we added population. Right. Good. Don't know why it's in black there. Uh, let's try and figure out why it's doing that. Uh, set back to white. Okay, we need to set this back to white. Yeah. Set color C white. Now for good to go. Yeah. Okay, that's working now. Um, that's that's weird. <laughs> I think I think that's pretty much the button complete. Um, I might just leave it here to be honest. In the next video, I think I'll probably go into some unit separation stuff because I think it's probably time to go into that uh, kind of thing. But it will get complicated then and things will start to get more tricky. But it will start to form more of an RTS game rather than just a top-down uh, isometric game that it is at the moment. It'll start to form more of an RTS feel to it. Um, and yeah, we'll m probably add a tile or two in to interact with the separated units as well and that'll probably be the the goal for next time it's just to start separating the units off which as i say it will be tricky but we'll give it a go um so yeah if you like this video remember to like subscribe what do you guys want to do and i'll talk to you in the next one